the the fuel was already lit. You know, the fire was very roaring, and you. <laughs> no, no pun intended. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's up, YouTube? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Greetings. However, whenever you're watching this, we appreciate you because you already know time is expensive. Yes, thank you for tuning in. And thank you for subscribing. But if you're here for the first time, the show is about anything and everything creative. creative. Anything that sparks your creativity in whatever medium you dabble yes, in. Yes, yes, expressing your creative soul. And welcome to an episode of Creativity on Sheep. I'm Oliver Siegel. And I'm Nino. And yes, we are brothers. Yes, we are. And it's the show where we feel that trust is a really valuable commodity. Yes, trust is expensive. And can't go forward in life without having that trust, but you don't know who to lend it out to. You know, it's not like Halloween where you give out free candy. You know, it's something that's really up there in value. For sure. So, uh, tread lightly. And why are we talking about this? And what we're looking in today is Rapid Fire. Ooh, yes. A very underrated Brandon Lee movie because everyone knows him to the Grove. Yes, right? yes. With his recent anniversary of his passing, it feels like it's only right to get Brandon Lee out of that crow limelight you yeah, know yeah. with the new crow movie coming to light, it's like, you know, let Brandon Lee finally rest in not be tied to the crow. Yeah, you know? for sure. It's like he made other movies. I feel like this movie was his true expression as a martial artist and as an actor because as a martial artist, he was able to handle the choreography. Yeah, for you sure. Know? He, re he really got to um, showcase his maturity as an actor, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. that he can, you know, take any future roles, whatever it was to come after this. Yeah, you know? and not be like a, a Bruce Lee ripoff. Even though his, as his father. Yeah, but for sure. He, you know, always, well, he tried to make his own path. Yeah, for you know? sure, definitely. You know, this being a, a homage to, um, to his father, Bruce Lee, yeah. because there is some scenes or some fight scenes where he kind of homaged uh, Into the Dragon. Yeah, Into you know? the Dragon. Uh, Chinese connection where you went like disguise. Oh, totally right. Yeah, the yeah. telephone guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bruce Lee was a telephone yeah, guy. Yeah, Chinese but, connection. Yeah. And then he dressed up as uh, Brendan dressed up as a um, laundromat factory worker. Right. Yeah. It, it, but it, what really was the distinct was the glasses. The glasses. You know? Yeah, definitely. It showed that he really can like carry his own as far as having other stars. He was able to hold weight to the scenes, you know, even though he was um, right next to uh, Powers Booth. Yeah. I mean, uh, he's he's co-star, but you know, honestly, other than this movie, I don't know what else he's done that really makes him iconic up to this yeah. movie. Fair, yeah. Powers Booth's acting wasn't, you know, didn't really wow me. He just really seemed at a hard edge, um, you know. Typical uh, New York type cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, kind of what you always see, like in like all those uh, old school noir films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what this movie is about, um, Brandon Lee plays a character named uh, Jake Lowe, who just kind of happens to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, right? of course. And uh, <laughs> of course. Right, and Brandon Lee as Jake Lowe was able to be a witness of who was the killer at mm -hmm. that you know, at, at the party. Right, and it just so happened the cops that took him in. They were tied with a mob. 
and then they have to uh, transport them to Chicago. Because of just like the jurisdiction yeah. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. The jurisdiction just to get them off their their hands. Man, those cops in Chicago end up being a little crooked. Yeah. Right. And it's because he's being tied in with the mafia. Yeah, and they're all part of it. They were gonna frame Jake Lowe, cop killer. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But they were the ones that actually shot the cop. Now, now they're trying to kill Jake Lowe in the apartment. Mm-hmm. And he has to team up with the with the cops, but he doesn't know who to trust. Yeah, Powers Booth. Right, being the be on the good side, but then later on he was able to, uh, you know, bet on that trust, and you know, mm -hmm. and to side with the right people, and in, in order to clear his name, and they had to do it at whatever it costs to take out um, Serrano. Serrano. Mm -hmm. Serrano. Who's the head honcho of this of the uh, this mafia gang that they're that the feds are trying to get after, and then in connections with uh, Tao Tao who has the connections with the supply. So from there, they're all just trying to nail all of them at once. Yeah, two but, birds with one stone. Yeah. But then after catching Serrano, they still have to find Tao. Mm -hmm. Right. And like in like the the story kind of like was choppy, so it kind of felt like two movies at the same time. Yeah, because, like two endings, right? Yeah, because uh, the whole shootout at uh, Serrano's restaurant. Yeah, yeah. You know, it just the whole momentum of the film just felt like it was toward, it was it was about to end. <laughs> yeah, you know? for sure. But I honestly felt like they should have shown more, more interactions with Tao, and maybe they could have sped up the movie where they all met together in one location. Yeah, yeah. You know? Maybe maybe the restaurant. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they, they could have still had, you know, that scene where Brandon was chasing Tao. Oh, yeah, you know, for they, sure. They still could have added that in. But a notable mention, Dustin knew in. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. 21 yeah, Jump Street. 21 Jump Street. And, and Three Ninjas. Three back, Ninjas. Right? He was there. Dustin knew in, y'all. He was there. Uh, there's a scene here in the factory where he fought an antagonist and then he showed his uh, Wing Chun. And then the whole uh, climbing bit as well. The little parkour move. I mean, we, we mentioned that in that Jackie Chan movie review uh, last episode. If you didn't know about that, you can check it out. But I mean, we're going to mention it here again. But I mean, there's a fan scene in this movie that Brandon Lee outmaneuvered um, one of the henchmen. But it, you know, knowing this was in '92, and then Rumble the Bronx, Jackie Chan's film that came out three years later in '95, Jackie Chan did about the, did the same move. wasn't as crisp or as cool as Brandon Lee's. But what if that they got some inspirations? Yeah, from each know? other. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's because of how Rumble in the Bronx was taking a little bit from Way of the Dragon, yeah. you know? With and then there's a, he did a little Jack Chan move where he kicked the table towards the gunman. Yeah, dude. So he can kind of say that like a JKD as well. Yeah, just Meets with Jackie Chan, right? right? Using whatever's around yeah. him. Yeah. You know, just to kind of gain that momentum or just that upper edge. Yeah, know? for sure. I, I really feel like this is, was his peak action film. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Know? It's like you can only imagine the future action films that he would have gotten. Yeah, oh man, for right. sure. Like, would, would we have gotten, like, Mark DeCosco? Like, oh, he was strong, yeah. yeah. Like, would we have gotten Seagal still? Yeah. Like, or Rob Van Dam? Yeah, like, yeah. Would they, eat, would they be obsolete as far as, because you already got Brandon and, yeah. you know, the Brandon Lee name, or yeah. just Bruce Lee name. Yeah, of and course. Everything. No. Like, he gets everything. <laughs> 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 Always Bruce Lee. Always Bruce Lee. <laughs> What about me? What about me? <laughs> Always been <Bruce> sweet. <laughs> nah, but seriously, we, uh, who knows? I mean, maybe more collabs? Oh, oh yeah, because he did he did uh, Showdown Little Tokyo. Yeah, with, uh, with Dolph Lundgren. Right. Dude, what if he did a buddy cop with uh, Van Damme? Ooh, oh. That'd be fucking hilarious, dude. Man. That'd be awesome comedy with great action. All right. Like, like their rush hour. Ooh, like Brandon Lee and Stallone. Oh, come on, right? <laughs> Who would not want to watch that? And I would. We already mentioned him, Brandon Lee and Chris Tucker. Right, so. if, he, if he did Rush Hour. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, it's okay. He did what he did. Like, his very first movie gave off his, 
James Bond yeah. feel, right? In Laser Mission. A lot of dialogue. Yeah, for his very first. <laughs> yeah, it felt like Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of dialogue. Like, wow, that's the most I've ever heard Brandon talk in a movie. Right, that's gonna be a future episode for sure. But, you know, for an independent film, like shot overseas, it was, I don't know, the production was pretty good. I totally thought. Bond. Yeah, it's James right. Bond. But um, what was his first uh, gig? With um, Bolo, Legacy of Rage. Legacy of Rage, yeah, dude. Where he had a, where he fought him in the back alley. In the right? back alley, and he was a waiter or a busboy. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. So it's Legacy of Rage, then Laser Mission was his Bond, and then his little cameo in uh, Kung Fu. Man, man fucking uh, <laughs> ironic, man. I don't know if that's mockery or what, but he did that. He was bald and down, I believe. Man, that was and that was supposed to be Bruce Lee's. That was supposed to be Bruce Lee's show. But David Carradine took over yeah, because yeah. Uh, the studio what a more white role or or not too oriental looking man whatever that means right and then hey man <laughs> he got to do what after that showdown Tokyo yeah. with Dolph I mean he got less dialogue I mean Brandon got less dialogue in that movie but I mean his attitude felt like really cocky yeah and yeah, yeah. like college kid douchebag yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude, totally. Yeah, like his jokes wasn't hitting, but it was funny. <laughs> it was like a young Brandon. Like, yeah, like he was trying to get warmed up to Hollywood. Or like maybe he felt like restricted as far as what the script asked it from him. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. And maybe. maybe like a little too excited. <laughs> yeah, it's off longer. <laughs> <laughs> and to career co star. Yeah, yeah, so totally. Like, or maybe he just try to outshow. Golf, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah that, that's definitely going to be another future episode. Well, speaking of Dolph Lundgren, imagine if uh, Brandon was still around, if he was an expendable. Oh. Well, instead of Jet. Not nothing against Jet or Chuck, but if Brandon was still around. Man. I wouldn't doubt he'd been part of the expendables. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh man. man. That would have been awesome. That would have been awesome. Like, I got goosebumps. Right, like ultimate action star team right yeah, there. Yeah, man. Nothing against the other guys because they're awesome as well. It's just there's no, there wouldn't be enough room. There wouldn't be enough room, man. <laughs> no, not or not enough weapons to pass around. <laughs> like they're all weapons, though. Right? right? That's why <laughs> they all need weapons. Some don't need it. Right? <laughs> it's like so much awesomeness in one team. It's just oh, it's yeah. not enough room, though. <laughs> it's like, fuck the dialogue. It's all happening. <laughs> What story? What story? <laughs> story? It's like Spangles. You don't need story. Let's go. So what would you rate it out of a five? Out of five stars, uh, I, I still have to give it a three out of five. Um, okay. Just because the, um, that third act, it was a little choppy and you know, I feel like they could have fixed it just a little bit better. I feel like the, the love scene with the woman caught I, mean, I felt like that was kind of forced characterization as uh, as far as to re reintroduce the audience to Jake Lowe losing his father. Yeah. Right. And how they try to tie it back into <laughs> the main story, like uh, okay, <laughs> like just to convince, like convince Jake Lowe to get Tao or to you know continue on with their mission yeah. you know they should have filmed more of Tao yeah instead of that 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 sex scene right well, but yeah. who doesn't want to see Brandon Lee's butt <laughs> <laughs> right it's like saying well, like he's sex sells I get it yeah. you know but that really dragged the story and yeah. um, I mean you still got a different different love scene but you, like it was too long <laughs> <laughs> hey maybe it's so they, they should have got Tao <laughs> It took so long! What the hell are you doing? Go get down! Do what you do the love bullshit! Get down! <laughs> oh, man. Uh. The, the fuel was already lit, you know, the fire was very roaring and you... <laughs> no, no pun intended, you know what I'm saying? But it's like he could have gotten Serrano while he was roasting, you know, while he got Serrano, you could have gotten Tal there at the same time. End yeah. of story, and Brandon Lee walks off into the sunset, yeah. and then the movie over. You know what I mean? It's like... You can still chase Tal, right? <laughs> like you got away from the back door of the restaurant, right? That's why it's called rapid fire, man. Right? You know, the fire in this film, man. <laughs> man. Hey, look, the warehouse was on fire. Yeah. So it's just, like, there's a, there's a fire theme to this, to this movie. 
I give it a three as well. I agree. They should have added Tao a little bit towards the middle mm -hmm. and like blended it to the end yeah. of the shootout in the restaurant. Yeah. You know, it was still an entertaining movie. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like uh, just seeing Brandon Lee in action. Again, just seeing his full expression of his martial art. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's honestly, it's worthy if he had a DVD just rewatch his fight scenes. I, yeah, I think that's yeah. just what's really worth worth having, worth watching. Cool feature it, I think. It's like, it's just a rarity thing type of thing where you really see a lot of uh, interviews and like just Brandon Lee footage, yeah. you know. The scenes in this movie, they use in the, uh, in the marketing magazine and stuff like that. No, no way. Like the choir, remember the death when he passed? Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. They use clips. Oh yeah, you did. You clipped that out yeah. of the magazine, right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That's true. Okay, I forgot about that. Good fight scenes, good choreography, mm -hmm. good action. Comedy was cool. It wasn't too over, over the top. It's natural. Yeah, it wasn't too dry. I mean, yeah, I felt like uh, you know, it made me made me chuckle a little bit. It didn't make me like you know fall out of my seat or anything. Yeah, that's yeah, so a really total classic '90s action. Yep. With no wires. No wires. Exactly. No wires. A lot of pyrotechnics, yeah. but no wires for the most part. Yeah, like that, that shootout really felt like a straight up like cowboy western type film, mm -hmm. right? Just modern day western. Yeah, right. Some also some co-star goons were also in the film uh, Big Trouble Little China. Oh yeah, true, true. Yeah, so if you know who they are, you'll spot them. Yeah. Oh, and all this, all this mention of Tao, you know, the actor who played him, yeah. you know, he was also in Rush Hour. Like, I'm totally blanking out on the name, but, you know. Oh, man. Like, Chris Tucker and Brandon Lee. Dude, seriously. Rush Hour. Man. Brandon Lee, you can only imagine where he'd gone if that accident didn't happen in The Crow. Yeah. You know man. what I'm saying? In, you know, again, that's why we're doing this in honor of Brandon, because, you know, we, as Brandon Lee fans, we don't want everybody to know Brandon Lee just for The Crow. Yes, you know? agree. He is known for many things. Yeah. I mean, even though it's a small filmography, you know, just that small bit is worth his legacy. Yeah. You know, it just, sure. it just it just leaves the stamps of what he is as a human being, martial artist, an actor. Yeah. It's like we, I'm not gonna act like we know him personally. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no. No, it's like, like well, just give me his uh, just dude. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because he really paved his own path, and yeah. you know, as a human being of wanting to make a name as an actor. Yeah, you know? and Brandon was young when his father passed. Mm -hmm. And all his, all he knows is his father's movies, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe just trying to be a powerful actor or in cinema, mm. make his presence known, like his father. Yeah. Not so much be like his father. Yeah. You know? And I mean, as far as the way Brandon talks and his intellect uh, in his interviews really has that that Bruce Lee suave though. Yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. You, you really you really know that he's been reading his dad's writing yeah, yeah. and that it, it stuck with him and mm -hmm. that he, he knew that Brandon Lee dove into philosophy himself mm -hmm. and just you know he really meditated and just really in tune with the world around him. Yeah there's a lot of charisma like his dad. Mm -hmm. You know he really has a powerful magnetic stage presence Definitely. on screen. Yeah. He doesn't let his dad's name get to his head as far as like using it as leverage. True. In in Hollywood. It's like I wanna be my own actor. Yeah. You know? I agree. I mean it, maybe that's why they got Brandon Lee on Showdown Little Tokyo, just because of the the Lee name. Yeah, yeah. You know. And even though he's on screen with Dolph Lundgren, Brandon was able to hold his own weight. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, he was able to be on screen with that star. Yeah, you know? for sure. He man, Lewis. Right? So, yeah, y'all. I mean, again, we're going to rate this movie 3 out of 5, but, you know, watch it for yourselves. Um, it used to be 20th Century Fox. I mean, now under... Now Disney owning 20th Century Fox. I don't know if it's on Disney Plus, under <laughs> action. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, true. Um, but if you can find a DVD, VHS, hey. Now you know. Now you know that this movie existed. Go look up the clips yourselves on YouTube. 
But hey, now you know that Brandon Lee has more movies than just The Crow. What, whatever bin you find it in. Yeah, whatever bin you guys find it in. Yeah, whatever uh, thrift shop you find it in. Yeah, yeah. Amoeba, Rasputin, yeah. someone's garage sale. Yeah, I mean, whatever you guys find movies. I mean, I know Best Buy completely cut out their physical sure. medium. They have like box sets, but yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, martial okay. art box set. But. Brandon Lee box set. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Bye but. bye. But again, you know, if you guys like phys physical medium, however you get it, you know, find it. Rapid Fire. Hell yeah. Brandon Rapid Lee. Fire. <laughs> it's a must. Rented a few times. VHS. Yeah. Over, again, at Mission Mission Video. Over on Mission in Geneva. Which is no longer there, but mm -hmm. thank God it was. Mm -hmm. Five for five. <laughs> five, five, five. Right? Five movies, five days. Five dollars. It's cool. That's pretty cool. Dollar a movie. It's awesome, right? Except for the new releases. It helped spark our love for storytelling. Yeah. Exposed us to a lot of good stuff, you know? Yeah, dude. And you know, thankfully, our uh, parents let us rent whatever we wanted. Yeah. So, thanks. All right, yeah. This is the time for end this episode with a motivational quote for y'all. And let the value hit you for what it's worth. If you heard it before, by all means, it's just a nice self-reflection of where we are today. Today. The present. And this one is by Lillian Smith. And it states, Faith and doubt both are needed, not as antagonists, but working side by side to take us around the unknown curve. End quote. Nice. Definitely goes hand in hand with this movie and the value of trust. You know, even though our trust is ex truly expensive, mm -hmm. it has to go off a of gut feeling, you know, your, your vibe. Mm -hmm. You know, or just however you want to go about feeling out the situation that you're in. Only you know you and where you need to go and where your trust takes you. Yeah. I mean, Jake Lowe, I mean, he would, he didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, of course, he had to trust himself to survive in order not to be labeled as victim or as a cop killer or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, he had to survive and, again, trust which cop is, you know, real and who's fake yeah, you know for sure for you guys as creators you know trust who you want in your circle as far as creative support choose wisely yeah trust mm -hmm. is expensive yeah you know? I mean even though your closest friends may seem like your best friends but hey, they can two time you it's almost like the prayer of footprints in the sand have faith right yeah definitely keep your faith and your intuition and you know those two things will help guide you to where you need to be and who, what kind of people you need to surround yourself with and to help you remind yourself how to stay true to yourself in order to trust others around you. Agreed. And, you know, trust the universe. Yeah, and love yourself for real. Yeah. That way you get better clarity of who you want to surround yourself with. Totes, my goats. So, yeah. Rapid fire. Yeah, you know, rapid fire. Go get it. Do us a favor and just smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Yes, but if yes. you don't like smashing, you know, tap lightly. Very lightly. But if you don't, then disregard what I just said and just exit out. But overall, help us continue to grow and just keep spreading the word. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. Comment on uh, what other movies you uh, su suggest us uh, that we review. Yeah, or whatever comics you want us to look at. And yeah, definitely coming out with more new music. So stay tuned, y'all. Yes, yes. Because it's that time for us to say, keep creating, stay creative. Stay independent, have your own voice. Do your best as a human being to stay motivated and to keep on going. Yes. Kill the negativity, spread the love. Continue your martial arts training and keep putting in the reps. Yeah, man. Mind, always mind your surroundings. Till next time, y'all. Till next time. Peace. Peace. Don't get down. <laughs> no.